How is everyone? Have we enjoyed St. Augustine? We're so glad you're here. I want to thank again the Florida Suncoast, our hosting region, particularly the chairman, Lance Berman. Also, uh, Paul Simcock, Rich Peter, and Dave Chestnut, the region director. We also uh, had several major sponsors of the event, namely uh, Cadillac Motor Division and Hagerty Insurance, along with Steel Rubber and USA and Park Supplies. Another successful meeting. We have we had 292 members registered and with their family and friends, a total of 605 people here. We have 35 states represented and we'll also uh, six foreign countries including Canada, New Zealand, Australia, the Netherlands, Norway, and Germany. cars on the show field today. I think we need to thank the uh, management and employees of the Renaissance Resort for making our stay just wonderful. I want to say thank you to everyone who is attending their first Grand National, and I'd like to ask all of you to stand up and be recognized. Cadillac, the South Club Museum, and Research. 
couple other members that are integral to the smooth running of our club who I'd like to introduce. Those are our office managers, Mike and Nancy Book. Mike and Nancy make my job much easier. Uh, the self-starter staff, the editor, Steve Stewart. Receive. 
received a little red ticket, as Gary said. So at this point, we will have someone pull the ticket. And this person will receive a second free copy of the book when we send them out. And the winner is Richard Sills.
at the rate of 11 issues per year. Newsletters that could be counted upon to arrive at its target audience without fail during the first part of every month. Bringing all of the important and entertaining news, past, present, and future, for his region's members to enjoy and look forward to so much. Please join with me to congratulate the recipient of this year's Cadillac and LaSalle Club Newsletter Excellence Award, the editor of the Rocky Mountain Region Stagmar, Mr. David Legier. So from his region, accepting for him is Tim Foy, our own hard worker for the self-starter. The second award is the Website Excellence Award. I have the feeling it's that humidity in Florida making these difficult to open. The regional website selected for this year's award is abounding with members' card photos, event listings, and even event photos, in addition to those card photos. Club info and monthly club newsletters. My understanding is it is the go-to place not only for the region, but many CLC members. After long and careful consideration of all the region and chapter websites by last year's recipient, this year's recipient of the Website Excellence Award is the Potomac Region Vince Taliano Webmaster. Unfortunately, Vince also was not able to be with us, so accepting from his region is Tom McQueen. Our next award is the Ian Saunders International Activity Award. A collector with severe Cadillac itis. This year's recipient caught the bug one day in February 1982 when he saw a classified ad for a 1956 Sedan DeVille. Of course, he had read the Maurice Henry book so he knew what that car was all about. He ended up buying the car, and unknown to him, at that time, was on his way to becoming a part supplier and the go-to person in his country, as well as many surrounding countries. He jokes that he sometimes felt like the St. Bernard of broken Cadillacs. He was co-founder and served as a student as president of the Cadillac Club of Switzerland, Congratulations go to this year's recipient of the Jan Saunders International Activity Award, Roger Zimmerman from Switzerland. Well, unfortunately, I think it was too far a swim, and Roger was not able to join us, so we will make sure that we ship that award to him. Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, 
Through their annual You Ain't Nothing But a Pound Dog, Elvis themed fundraiser, replete with people poodle skirts and rolled up shirt sleeves, to their youth programs that reach beyond children of their members. To adopt a NASCAR museum youth docent they met at a local cruise in, who in turn has adopted their Cadillacs, or their outreach to partner with nonprofit organizations for youth to raise money while developing relationships with young people interested in Cadillacs and some agencies that work with them. All of this and more yet, they feel they have every reason to believe that 2012 is going to be better still. This year's recipient of the North Mueller Regional Activity Award is the Peach State Region Stan Tucker Director. The next award is the Mary Lou Evans Membership Award. Stabilizing membership since the challenges of a lifetime and continual membership growth have been no small task for a dedicated and enthusiastic membership secretary. Without the membership growth since 2008, their member roster would be in tatters instead of growing with a vibrancy and buzz. With their enhanced appreciation for national membership compliance, the sky is the limit for this region. This year's recipient of the Mary Lou Evans Membership Award is Membership Director Doug Bailey. Easy restorations of newer cars, 
trips in which the writers drive their cars substantial distances, and the chronically of regional events that focus on the cars and hopefully bring in new members. So now if I get things in the right order, our editor, Steve Stewart, will present those two awards. Thank you very much, Gary. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all the people in the audience who have ever written anything for the self-starter. We appreciate your efforts very much. I know that there are many people in the room who have done this, and without you, we wouldn't have a magazine. If you've ever submitted something to the self-starter, I'd like to invite you to do so. It's a fairly painless process. I wouldn't be here after as many years as I've been here. So you make it as easy as we possibly can. So if you've taken a trip with your Cadillac, if you've restored it, if you've got something on mind with regard to the historical aspects and the scholarly aspects that we just mentioned for the B-16, please sit down and do something for us. Now, our first uh, award for the B-16 is going to go to an individual that uh, I think many of us will know, and I mentioned his name, he's a professional writer. And um, it's always nice to have a professional writer do this. We have many in the club, but we rarely get anything from a professional writer for the simple reason that they make their income from writing. And since the self-starter doesn't pay, they usually stay busy writing for things that they can sell. But it, I don't mean to sound that, to make that sound too mercenary. They are very good individuals, and we've seen many of their fine writings on the pages of the self-starter. The individual that we are going to give the B-16 award to tonight has done things about Cadillacs and Le Mans when the Cadillacs raced there in the early 1950s. And then the uh, Carrera Panamericana, uh, the 1954 Cadillac, they raced there and, and did very well without any kind of back to back. And they also did a very good piece on post-World War II four-door convertibles. So the individual that will be honoring tonight will be Angelo Van Bogart, who's the editor of Old Cars Weekly. And I don't know if Angelo is in the audience. I don't think he is. I didn't hear from him. And I haven't seen him. So I guess we can get that award to him right now. So thank you. And then... Catalog 
the historical assets rescued from the Clark Avenue manufacturing complex demolition. Both are well-deserved recipients of this award in their own right. Based on the remarkable working partnership they formed over the years and during their collaboration in authoring A Labor of Love, it is fitting that the two recipients of this LaSalle Discovery Award for 2012 are Ron Van Gelder and Matt Larson.
but represents the CLC with honor and dignity, exemplifying the finest qualities of the standard of the world automobile. Our recipient has been a CLC member since 1984 and has served on the board of directors since 1998. He has promoted the Cadillac hobby and the CLC worldwide, serving as the club's vice president for international affiliates. He performed a leading role in linking the CLC with its counterpart clubs in other countries. His extensive technical knowledge of Cadillacs qualified him to serve as the chief judge of the 2002 Grand National Meet in Cadillac's centennial year, and to serve on a continued basis as the national assistant chief judge. In that capacity, he conducts seminars to educate other club members on how to judge a car, and has brought the scoring process into the computer age to make it a more efficient and accurate process. He shares his knowledge generously, serving as the club's technical advisor for 1931 Cadillacs. This extraordinary gentleman has not confined his service to the National CLC. He served as director of the Motor City Region, which earned the Norman Miller Regional Activity Award in 1995 under his leadership. And last, but certainly not least, he has done extraordinary work for the Cadillac LaSalle Club Museum and Research Center. He has served as a board member and as corresponding secretary, and back in 2004, he set a shining example for future donors by contributing a national award-winning 1931 Cadillac to the CLC Museum. Since 2007, he has served as president of the CLC Museum and Research Center. Under his leadership, the CLC MRC has gone through the exhaustive process of evaluating alternative locations for our museum and has negotiated and successfully concluded an agreement with the Gilmore Museum that will have permanent benefit to all CLC members now and in the future. The club honored him previously by presenting him with the Distinguished Service Award in 2005. Now, it is my pleasure on behalf of the Cadillac and LaSalle Club to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Paul Ayers at Farmington Hills Fishing. He was 
somewhere in Louisiana at the time. It took his friend John Faust three hours to locate and find an auto supply with the part that he needed. He stayed with the car to guard it from any harm. They installed the new gasket. The car was driving great until he heard the tread flapping off his left rear tire. They pulled off the highway, unloaded the luggage, spare tire parts to get down to the jack and spare tire. Thankfully, my spare tire had plenty of air. I changed my tire, loaded the trunk, and we drove in without further problems. P.S. Our recipient is a friend of John that lives in, I'm not going to probably pronounce this correctly, Balingen, Germany. He stores his 67 Cadillac to Bill in Justin, Texas. He drives that car every year to a CLC national meet. This year's Hard Luck Award goes to Klaus Deisinger, president or resident of Germany, and he drove 1,230 miles from Justin, Texas to here. Klaus. Coming to St. Augustine, 
2,473 miles. When we looked it up, that's what he listed. When we looked at Google, it was 2,491 miles. From Newberry Park, California, to St. Augustine, Florida, K. Craig Chawley.
Excellent. Thank you, Ellen and Alfred, for joining us for that. So now, if you've been following along, we are at um, beginning some of the ACAR award, car Awards. The first award, this is a special year for the Alante, and so they ask permission to do an award. So if Norman Penfield would join us, he will present the Alante Award.
to an individual, individuals, two of them, who have a 1993 Polo Green, absolutely exquisite Alante, Russell and Paula Bopolak. Thank you, Mr. Penfield. Well, now we'll give you a few new faces to look at. If we would have Richard Sills come up, and he's going to present as the first presentation. For 40 years, and as national treasurer for 32 years, among many other accomplishments for the club. He began his career at Cadillac Motor Car Division in 1941 and he always had a special affinity for 1941 Cadillacs. He wasn't alone in that because the last survey taken of cars owned by our members shows that the 1941 Cadillac is still the most collected, uh, best represented model year. Uh, Ansel passed away in 1998 and his family donated his 1941 Fleetwood 60 Special to the Cadillac LaSalle Club Museum and Research Center. The club created this award in 1991 when the 41 Cadillacs were 50 years old. It is given to a 1941 Cadillac that represents a high level of authenticity and in close cases a preference is given to a car that's supposed to be a largely original and preference is also given to a car that did not receive this award previously. Based on the selection we made this year, it is my pleasure to present the Ansel Sackett 1941 Cadillac Excellence Award to a 1941 Cadillac Fleetwood 60 Special owned by J.C. and Judy Osteen of Tallahassee, Florida. Said that our team determined that one of the cars in this category 
deserves special mention for combining superb condition with an extremely high degree of originality, taking into account the age of the car. And so I want to present the first Past President's Preservation Award for 2012 to a Crystal Fire Miss 1967, 1967 Sedan DeVille, owned by Klaus Deisinger of Bali in Germany. <laughs> Each and every one of us 
appreciate what you've done in the preparation, getting them here and sharing them with us this last week. You are truly, each one of you, to be congratulated on your efforts, on your expertise, and certainly the resources that you put in these cars so we can enjoy them. Thank you. <clears throat> Gary would like to share with you in detail how this will proceed so that it will run smoothly and you can enjoy it. Thank you, Richard. Similar to last year, what we're going to do is have two stations. There's a station on either side of the room where the round tables are. There's a full set of the identifying markers so that you don't have to cross the room. So if you're on this side of the room, please feel free to go to that side of the room to claim your award. This half of the room, please feel free and go to that side of the room to claim your award. What will happen is you first go to the round table, you tell them your name, they will find the correct identifying award. You will get a piece of paper that you bring then to the tables at the wall, and we'll make sure that we hand you the correct award that you have won. Now, you have two options. That award can be taken out of the box and you can have your picture taken with it, or we have a couple sample awards that you can have your picture taken with so that you don't have to remove your box, yours from the box to take it home and, and travel safely with it. The photography station is going to be over there by the curtains where the President, Lars Neller, and our Chief Judge, Carl Stein, are standing. Last, when we get to the Best of Show Awards, those cups are here in front. Lars and I will come back up to make sure that I can hand it to Lars and he can shake the hand of the Best of Show winner. So those cups are here and those last awards will be presented up front. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. We would like to commence this evening's appreciation with the touring class. This evening, please feel free to express your appreciation anytime you wish. We don't have to wait to the end of a class. We don't have to wait to the end of a page. If you want to applaud and hoot and show your appreciation, you are certainly welcome to do that anytime. Commencing with class T6 in the touring class. In third place, 1952 Cadillac sedan from Omosasha, Florida, Michael and Guy. Second in that class, a 1955 Cadillac sedan from Athens, Georgia, Kevin Blair Garrison. In touring class seven. In second place with a 1960 Eldorado Brits from Fort Pierce, Florida, Jim Richard In first place, in class T7, a 1962 Cadillac sedan female from Largo, Florida, Gordon J. Conicelli. In touring class eight, in third place, a 1969 Cadillac Rome from Ocala, Florida, Giannis. In second place, a 1976 Cadillac Coupe de Ville from Kennesaw, Georgia, Sandy Partridge. And in first class, place in class T8, a 1968 Cadillac Coupe de Ville from Wyckoff, New Jersey, Robert J. Walton. Yeah. 
underclass, T9. In third place, a 1981 Cadillac Brome from Muncie, Indiana, Robert Everington. In second place, a 1978 Cadillac Oupteville from Clifton, New Jersey, Mike Cassio. And in first place, a 1979, correction, 1976 or 77 Cadillac Coupe de Ville from Paris, Florida, David Chestnut. <laughs> and touring class 99, a 1974 Cadillac combination, Hearst Ambulance from Stephen, Missouri, Matthew Taylor. That concludes the touring class and we'll get right into primary. In class B1, in first place, a 1921 Cadillac seven passenger sedan from Odessa, Florida, Brando Pistorius. In class B2, in second place, a 1929 Cadillac Town Sedan from Coral Spring, Springs, Florida, Edward Dower. In first place, in class P2, a 1931 Cadillac Sedan from Clearwater, Florida, Ted Dorman. primary class nine. First place is a 1937 Cadillac four-door convertible sedan from Nokomis, Florida, Fred Stovall. In first place as well, a 1937 Cadillac four-door convertible sedan from Coral Springs, Florida, Edward Dower. In primary class 11. In first place, a 1941 Cadillac sedan from Tallahassee, Florida, Chasey Osteen. We usually never give special recognition to a particular car for any reason. What we're doing here tonight is is probably deemed enough, all these wonderful people coming to, to give you your due. When I saw this automobile, however, it brought back a memory from many, many, many years ago, and literally the first Cadillac I ever fell in love with on my paper route when I was 10 years old. It was at the corner of Brown and Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. <laughs> and it was in front of a shell station that hadn't been in operation for quite some time. It was a 1949 Cadillac 7519 sedan. And I just coveted that car as mine, probably through my adolescence. And I do today as I celebrate my 74th natal day. A 1949 Cadillac 7519 sedan, of course, is a long wheelbase sedan. It took first place today in primary class 12, and I certainly want to thank Raymond Anderson from Edgewater, Florida, for bringing my car today. In class B13, A 1949 Cadillac sedan from Palm City, Florida, John Gilletenden, in first place. <laughs> Class B14. In second place, a 1953 
Cadillac, Eldorado convertible from Alfreda, Georgia, to Benton. In first place, from Broussard, Louisiana, Brady Como with a 1953 Cadillac Eldorado convertible. Class P-15. In third place, a 1956 Cadillac sedan from Marietta, Georgia, Stan Tucker. Also, in third place, a 1956 Cadillac sedan from Marietta, Georgia, Art Gardner. The 1956 Cadillac Sedan DeVille from Marion, Illinois, Bill Clendenin. And in first, first place in Class B-15, a 1956 Cadillac Coupe DeVille from Lake Mont, Georgia, Jeff Butler.
In third place, a 1963 Cadillac Eldorado Moritz from Hobie Sound, Florida, Donald Catania. In second place, a 1964 Cadillac Eldorado Convertible from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, Al Cowley. And in first place, in primary class 20, a 1964 Cadillac Eldorado convertible from Roswell, Georgia, Meta Martina Butler.
In third place, in primary class 27, a 1983 Cadillac Eldorado Bridge Convertible from Charlotte, North Carolina. In first class, we're still at 28. Number one position in 1996, Cadillac Brown from Waterford, New York, Dr. Joe was there. Also in first place in 1994, Cadillac Brown from West Palm Beach, Florida, Paul Kuzinski. In first place as well, in primary 28, is a 1990 Cadillac Brown from Lindhurst, New York, William You probably know that I get this set of results of these fine automobiles a little bit before this banquet. Sometimes I have the opportunity to study them very closely. Sometimes I don't quite have that much time. And in that case, sometimes I get surprised a little bit. And I say this because I just, I thought it was going to happen, but I really wasn't sure, and I didn't know it until just now. Some time ago, as you're quite aware by now, Rodney Hux and Rob Robinson donated to the Cadillac LaSalle Club Museum and Research Center benefit auction in St. Augustine, Florida, a 1996 Concord de Ville sedan. It was polo green. And you, you saw its picture there in the self-starter. And you saw it Wednesday night, and you've seen it today. The car sold at public auction after spirited bidding for oh, probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, to Paul Ayers of Farmington Hills, Michigan. The car was purchased within the next seven minutes from Mr. Ayers by Lee Herbertman of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've had the opportunity to be pretty close to that car because I was sort of responsible for it being sold just the first time. <laughs> and I got to detail a little bit, although it sure didn't need it when it came in when the fellows delivered it to me on Wednesday afternoon. And then I got to detail it through three rainstorms yesterday and today. <laughs> and it looked pretty good, I thought. And as it happened, it stopped raining about 18 seconds before I started wiping the water off of it on one side. And I was not aware, truly, that the judges were on the other side and David Ritchie was in the car starting it for them and I was still trying to get the water off of it. I, I don't mean for this to be an amusing story, but um, it, um, it, it just happens that first place, in class B28 is a Polo Green 1996 Concourse sedan belonging to Lee Herbertman of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have been fortunate over the years to drive a pretty nice car away that might have even garnered first place in a, in a pretty nice show. I, I may have done that once or twice over the years. I have never driven one away quite this nice or quite as far as Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as I will do tonight. In class B29, third place with a 1993 Cadillac convertible from Summerfield, North Carolina, John Nash. In 
in second place, a 1993 Cadillac convertible from Aniston, Alabama, Art Sebelius. In first place, in B29, is a 1993 Cadillac convertible from Cumming, Georgia, Russ Popolek. Primary class, 99. First place in primary, 99, is a 1978 Cadillac Ambulance from Chapman, New York, Daniel Herrick. When you've done about everything you can do in primary, and you've satisfied your peers, your evaluators, and yourself, that you have done just about all you can do to reach the ACME, you're put into a separate class. You're no longer with the boys. You go into the senior class, and that's what these folks have done. Starting with senior class two, bearing in mind what they did just to get here. In senior two, in first place, a 1938 Cadillac four-door convertible sedan from Marion, Kentucky, Alan Stout. <laughs> Senior class six. In first place, a 1939 Cadillac convertible coupe from Windermere, Florida, Richard Nunes. In senior class eight, second place, a 1953 Eldorado convertible from Chevy Chase, Maryland, Mark Brodsky. And in first place, in class eight, with a 1958 Eldorado Brown from Vestidia Hills, Alabama, Don Brogy. <laughs> On to senior class nine. In third place, a 1967 Cadillac Sedan Deville from Bahingen, Germany, Haas Deisinger. In second place, a 1962 Cadillac sedan from Harwich, Massachusetts, Daisy. In first place, a 1961 Cadillac Deville from Gloucester, Virginia, Jim Eccleston. Thank you. Thank you. Also, in first place in senior class nine, a 1962 Cadillac Eldorado Baritz from Homosacha, Florida, Steve Tuck. And in first place as well, in class senior 09, is a 1968 Cadillac sedan from Camerton, North Carolina, Fred Caldwell Jr. to senior class 11. In third place, a 1993 Cadillac convertible from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Gary Foote. In second place, a 1992 Cadillac convertible from Rockaway, New Jersey, Sal Santoro.
that concludes the senior class. As you can appreciate and you're thinking about now, those people who are in first place in that senior class aren't there anymore. They will graduate to the senior reef and we'll see them in Quincy, Massachusetts. This evening for the Senior Wreath Awards, once again, appreciate what they did to get here. The Senior Wreath, Class 4, in third place, a 1949 Cadillac Club Coupe from Decatur, Georgia, Jay Friedman. in Senior Wreath Class 04, a 1939 Cadillac Coupe Convertible from Jacksonville, Florida, Mitchell Turk. And in first place, a 1947 Cadillac Convertible Coupe from Yorkland, Delaware, Clyde G. Rob Robinson. <laughs> On the class spot, in second place, a 1976 Cadillac Limousine from Southfield, Michigan, Jerry Steiner. place in Senior Reef Class W4, a 1967 Cadillac DeVille Convertible from Bristol, Pennsylvania, Michael Barusa. Senior Reef W6. 1984 Cadillac Seville from Littleton, Colorado, George Dameron. Once you've accomplished everything you can, and you've taken that evaluation and that criticism from your peers and those evaluators, and more likely from yourself, still came out on top, you lose it. You go to the senior ground, and that's where we are right now. In the senior ground class four, in first place, a 1941 Cadillac four-door convertible sedan from Fredericktown, Ohio, Joseph Poole. Crown Class 5. In first place, a 1962 Cadillac Coupe de Ville from Seattle, Washington, Don Malovich. Gentlemen, you asked me to remind you when we were about to award Best of Show. Way to go, Don. Dr. Neller, Dr. Fisher, it's going to happen now. It is with a degree of sadness, none of our companion, the Sal's, appeared. We don't have the best of show for the Sal. We will next year, I'm sure, in Quincy, but we have two 
Cadillac Awards to present for those who have attained the acme of this entire competition. Early best of show of the 2012 Cadillac LaSalle Grand National in St. Augustine, Florida is a 1939 Cadillac convertible coupe Richard Nunes from Windermere, Florida. Late model, best of show for the 2012 Grand National Meet here in St. Augustine is a 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome from Birmingham, Alabama, Don Cahill. Did I not say 57 number one of Well, I'm sorry, but that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. It is a 57 number one of Bell. I know it's a 58. I saw it. I coveted it. I lusted over it. I just read what was handed to me, and there it is. Apologies for every 57, 58 Colorado Brown owner, but I did not know the difference. Ruby Musser has asked me to announce that William Bill Hurley of Lawton, Oklahoma, is a first-time attender at any Grand National at 87 years old and drove a 1991 Alante. Those who have helped put on this meet and those previously that we've enjoyed so much will appreciate how busy Chris Malici might be. I hope that he has time to take a moment right now to invite us to Quincy, Massachusetts in 2013. All right, congratulations to all the winners. For the rest of you, I hope this is entertaining. <laughs> all right, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, going to uh, visit us in Boston, Massachusetts next year. We all want you to, of course, be a little bit educated about Boston, for those of you that haven't been there before. So bear with me as I try to teach you a few things. All right, so we're all coming to Boston. Those of you that are going to be visiting us in Massachusetts, that's what a typical welcome to sign when you enter a different town in Massachusetts. Let's play a little game. Does anybody know where this is? It's the Old North Church. Very good. Who's the guy on the horse? Paul Revere. See, you guys are good. Okay, where in Boston is this located? 
No, somebody said North End. That's right. And of course, those of you that are also familiar, you know that that was from the West End. Okay, let's try another one. A little harder now. No, it's not beginning. No. What part of Boston? That's the South End. Now, we don't want you to be confused if you happen to end up in the South End. We don't want you to tell somebody that you're somewhere else, even though you're South End. So anybody know where you view that skyline from? No, it's not Chicago. <laughs> this, of course, is Southie or South Boston, which is not the South End. Okay, so don't be confused by that. All right. Where are you now? You, you may be in an airplane or a helicopter. Yes, that's, that's, I give you creativity credit for that. That's a view of Back Bay. It's called Back Bay because they backfilled the bay. So if you're in the Back Bay, you're also maybe in Fenway Park. Fenway Park is located there. All right, let's play a game for a little while. The host hotel is located in this town. Now. You have to understand, pronunciation in Boston is very important. Okay, if, you, if you come to Boston, you have to, you have to pronounce things a certain way. And you'll have to excuse me because I actually grew up in Connecticut. <laughs> so they sent the guy from Connecticut up here to do the presentation on how to speak like a Bostonian. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so your host hotel is in what town? Quincy. Quincy. That's correct. Quincy. Okay. I went to school here. You, you may have an opportunity to visit here. Yeah, okay, the teacher from Assumption College in this town is obviously going to get it correct. This is Worcester. Okay, that's a two syllable word, Worcester. Okay, very important. Uh, right now we're working on a great plan bake. We want you all to come visit us on Friday night and have a good New England style plan bake. Lots of lobster, mussels, clams, and we might do it in this town. Now this has got to be easy for you after Worcester. Gloucester. See, you guys are good. Alright. Obviously many of you are going to be driving. So it's very important that you know a few things about how we drive in Massachusetts. Okay, first of all, we don't use turn signals. They just tell the other person where you want to go, so they can cut you off. So no need for those. Okay, some folks say our signage is not that good. I think our signage is fantastic. You just have to know a little bit about where you're going. So this is a good example. Many of you are going to arrive either via I-95 or I-93, which is also 128, which is also Route 1. The other thing you have to know is that I-95 South is Route 1 North, which is also 128 South, <laughs> as shown in the picture. Don't worry, of course, because you'll be traveling on I-93. It's the same road. We like to use these in Massachusetts. It's not a roundabout. It's a rotary. Don't be confused by our rotaries. We like to use them. And always be sure to yield when you enter them. Okay, here's another one. You're going to be driving on a couple of highways where it is absolutely 100% acceptable to drive in the breakdown lane. Feel free to use it. Just not with the trailer. That's illegal. <laughs> okay, this is a famous place, so a lot of you are not going to recognize this, but you'll know it from the same. For some reason, a lot of people think that they can park the car and hop a yacht. You can't do that. It's a yacht. So a policeman in a cruiser is going to have to come by and ticket you and tow it to Somerville. I don't know who would think of that idea anyway. <laughs> Alright, let's get into a little bit something.
something serious here so we can uh, move on with the program and the video. Uh, the host hotel for uh, the, the Grand National next year is the Boston Marriott Quincy. It's located in Quincy, Massachusetts. It has over 450 guest rooms. Uh, there's plenty of parking. Uh, it's a secure gated property. Uh, so uh, once you're on that property, your cars will be safe. You will be safe uh, as long as your friends help you stay that way. Um, it's only eight miles from Boston, and it's our, we have a room rate of $119 a night, which is about the best you're going to find uh, anywhere near the Boston area in the summer. Uh, we've gotten that room rate uh, from the Saturday night before uh, all the way through the Saturday night after. So feel free to come early uh, and spend a couple of extra days with us. Um, the reservation is open August 4. So the Grand National runs, as many of you know, because you've stopped by the table this week, and I thank you for that. Uh, you picked up a couple of uh, cards or brochures or information flyers. Uh, the uh, event runs from Tuesday, July 30. Uh, we're having a driving tour on that day. Uh, and it uh, goes through the Saturday night banquet, obviously, August 3. So because of the hotel reservation systems, we are unable to allow reservations to occur before 51 weeks prior to the event, so that's why uh, reservations will open for you on uh, August 4. Uh, they've given us a rather unique code, CAD CAD A. I have no idea what that means, but for those of you that book online, that's the code that you can use to do that. All of this information will be in the August issue of the Self Starter, assuming I get my act together in the next couple of weeks and get a draft over to Steve. Okay, here's a couple of date reminders again. Um, we have a special uh, activity going on uh, the Sunday prior to our Grand National. That is the annual North Shore Concourse de la Danse in Beverly, Massachusetts, uh, right on the coast, right on the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so we're working with the folks that are running that event. Uh, the, the featured marquee next year will be Cadillac. Uh, the drive is approximately one hour from the host hotel. So we encourage those of you that are able uh, to come a little bit early. We have the extended room rate and participate in the North Shore Concourse. Uh, it's a lovely venue. And, uh, it's a fantastic event. And we will be there this year uh, promoting the 2013 Grand National as well. Just a quick rundown of tours and events, and then we'll get on with the video presentation. Uh, we're going to visit a couple of things related to cars, of course. The Lars Anderson Auto Museum is the oldest auto museum in the country. Uh, the Collings Foundation is a private collection of rare brass era automobiles and antique aircraft, all of which still drive and fly. Um, we will, of course, spend some time in historic Boston. We'll be visiting the Salem Witch Museum, which is actually owned by a CLC member, uh, along with the House of Seven Gables, made famous by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, a tour of La Baron Bonnie, uh, the Plymouth Plantation and Plymouth Rock. Those will be featured on our Tuesday driving tour. Yes, that is spelled correctly. New England Clam Bake on Friday night. Still working out some of the details there. We want to try to offer you something that's both reasonable uh, but uh, represents some of our very fresh New England seafood. So we're working out some final details there. And we're going to have some kids' events and some special events for the ladies throughout the week as well. So it's going to be a very busy week. We're not going to have plenty of free to do that. You come into South Station. Uh, and then uh, there is a free hotel shuttle provided by the Boston Marriott Quincy from the, the local T stop. That's our subway. And also the Braintree Express Station, which is a bus service direct from Logan Airport. Uh, so lots of options for you. Uh, should, should be costing approximately $10 per person if you wanted to take the Braintree shuttle uh, from the airport. All right, I think we're going to move on to the video presentation. Interestingly, the video, Chris, didn't feature any of the uh, January weather in Boston. <laughs> well, what a great evening. I hope everyone had a great time. Congratulations to all of our winners. I hope to see everyone in Las Vegas for our national driving tour in October the 10th through the 13th and in Quincy next summer. Good evening. <laughs>